we lift a pencil, move a book, or sit on a chair, we don't deform these objects, or rather, we don't permanently deform them. And we have to be careful about our choice of words here, because if we sit on a chair, although unnoticeable, the chair legs actually get shorter. And this is due to the fact that the solids are made up of highly packed molecules, so when a solid is squeezed or stretched, the spacing of the molecules is altered. And of course, in this case, when the force is removed, the chair returns to its original shape. Now, another example of this is if we have a spring and we extend the spring and let go, the spring will eventually return back to its original length. We call this elastic behavior. However, if we continue to extend it, the string will eventually come to a point where it will not return to its original length. We call this plastic behavior. And this is really important in engineering if, for example, we need to mold an object from some material and we want it to retain its new shape. Let's look at a graph to help explain this further. As we increase the force applied to a spring, the spring will extend more. In other words, the tension is proportional to the extension. Now, if we further increase the tension, instead of it returning to its original shape, the spring will retain its new shape, meaning it is plastically deformed. The point at which this happens is called the elastic limit. This is also extremely important in engineering because different materials have different elastic limits, and we need to know these limits to be able to incorporate it into our designs.